All right, folks, what is good? What is good? What is good? This is an extra episode of the First and Frame Rate Show. As promised, I said I was going to bring you an episode today regarding National Signing Day for Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern, Coach Clay Helton, the coaching staff, I think they've done an outstanding job of bringing some kids here to t- bring in. I, I'm not even going to call them kids. I, I, I call them kids. But then again, these are young men that look like they're going to be ready to be the next great group of Eagles for Georgia Southern. From what I see on this list are a bunch of needs, a bunch of depth, a bunch of quality players that are going to be really good. I want to talk about the 16 guys from high school that are coming in to uh, the program, the three guys that are uh, guys that have been to community colleges. We also have some transfers that come through the transfer portal, which we will just talk about, uh, but we won't really go into them as far as what they bring to the table. I'm just going to give you their you know, names or whatever the case may be because that could be a whole nother episode in itself because the four guys that have uh, transferred through the transfer portal Coming to Georgia Southern are very special guys, and I they deserve their whole a whole episode for themselves. But in this extra, we're going to talk about these kids. We're going to go down the list of what they have. The link will be down in the description if you want to go to the Georgia Southern Eagles uh, website and look at these uh, players, and they have their information, all this stuff. I am very very excited about this, and and not only that. I want to talk about Coach Clay Helton once again. I know there's been a lot of talk about what he's been doing, what his intentions were coming to Georgia Southern, a lot of backlash, a lot of hate from that other school in California that we will not name here. But this is year number two of what Coach Clay Helton is putting together. And there's no doubt in my mind, this coach wants the best not only for him not only for his staff not only for the program but for the guys that are he bringing in he's bringing in some nice talent look like some guys that's going to be difference makers not only just on the field but off the field as well I, i this is just a beautiful thing to see because last year i thought that the recruiting classes going that we had come in and the transfers that came in were like the best that we could get. And it's not a knock on those guys because those guys are great in their own right and bringing those guys along with the new guys that are coming in, it's just going to be a beautiful thing. But it just seemed like they're taking another step and they're taking it to another level of like, hey, you ain't seen nothing yet. And the, these players that are coming in, I don't know what they're going to do but based on what I see on paper, it looks like they have the right guys to come in here to bring the right recruits in to make something happen. From a three-win season that we had before Coach Clay Helton come in to a six-win season. And if this thing goes the way it's going, we're going to be seeing in double-digit wins. And I, I'm not joking. I, I know I said we should have had eight and four last year, but no. Now... I'm not making a prediction, but this has a recipe to be a championship caliber team. What, I mean, just, just just win significant championships when it comes to the Sun Belt and whatever bowl that we're getting into. And I'm just talking about not just with these kids that are being that are coming on along from high school, but the transfers as well. Now, I, I don't said enough. I don't want to, you know, just keep going back and forth with that. Let's talk about some of these kids. Go on in order that it is on the website. Once, the, once again, the link will be down in the description. And uh, let, let's go ahead and get into this. Alex Smith, punter from Melbourne. Is it Melbourne? No, I'm sorry. From Richmond, Australia. Pro Kick Australia. This is a program that brings punters from the U, from Australia to the United States. They bought in punter Cameron Johnston, uh, that plays for the Houston, that played for the Houston Texans. Uh, Mitch Wisnowski that played at Utah. Michael Dixon from Texas. He's the number ninth. Uh, Alex Smith is the number ninth ranked punter in the class of 2022. He's the number five punter in Australia. 
according to 27 Sports, 24-7 Sports, was committed to Vanderbilt in 2022, but he decided to come to Georgia Southern. Played tennis at one point. This guy's an athlete. And um, he, he backed off from uh, tennis when COVID hit and started training to be a punter. It's really, that's one wild transition, right? But nevertheless, he's an eagle now. And he's going to continue to bring on that legacy that we had with our previous punter. And I think he's going to be nice, 6'6", 215. So we started out the gate with the punter. The next person that was signed uh, was Jaden McCow, tight end, 6'4", 230, out of Niceville, Florida, with the Niceville High School. Uh, as a senior, he had 14 catches for 158 yards and a touchdown. He was rated number 90 as a tight end by 24-7 Sports. Now, I don't think the ratings, for the most part, don't mean anything. It's about the type of player that you bring in and what they could do in your scheme. And we already we knew that we needed tight ends. Love J.J. McCaffrey. He did very well for us. But we didn't have enough, you know, um, tight ends out there on the field. And I know we have some that were capable of doing some things. A couple of guys were injured, whatever the case may be. But now we're going to talk about how many tight ends that we got it. As of right now, we got two that's coming from high school, and we got another one that's transferring in. We'll talk about that at a later time. But Alex, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jaden McCow coming in from Niceville, Florida. This guy looks like a stud. I've seen what he can do. But uh, I want to see what he can be able to do in his air raid offense. Speaking of the air raid offense, the next person that uh, signed was K.D. Dorsey. What a football name, K.D. Dorsey. 6'3", 195, Hezbediah, Georgia, Evans High School. Uh, I think he went to the same high school that Derrick Canteen went to. Isn't that very interesting? Nevertheless, 6'3", 195. Talk to, listen to Coach Clay Helton talk about this kid. Physical receiver. Want, you want a guy that can go up and get the ball, get some jump balls out of some of these DBs that are out there. Seems like he's going to be that guy to do it. First team, all region and 2-6-A grouping. Had 37 catches for 553 yards. Selected to play at the Border Bowl X for Team Georgia. Uh, he was uh, landed on the uh, Augusta Chronicle Dream 16 preseason of 2022. Caught four touchdowns as a junior. And he was rated 303 wide receiver uh, of, in the country and 197 player in the state. I think those numbers are, might be a little bit too low. I think this kid's going to be special. You put a kid in a, in a position to be successful with the offense like this, and you got this size, this is something that we've been wanting ever since we started hearing about this offense. Now, we do have some receivers that done very well for themselves. You talk about jump balls, look at a guy like um, a Derwin Burgess. You look at a guy like uh, who's got, Sam Kennison who's coming back. We're going to have some real good talent <laughs> on this field. But let's continue to keep going. Next person that was signed was an offensive lineman. Some We already know that we had a pretty good offensive lineman. We're just getting bigger and physical and nastier on that offensive line. Chris Carter, six foot seven, 300 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia. Mays High School went to uh, Garden City Community College. He also played defensive end, which is really interesting. Came, to, uh, decided to transfer to Georgia Southern. I want to see what this kid can do on this offensive line at six foot seven, three hundred pounds. Like, who's going to get through that? Who's going to get through this line? That, that's what I want to know because you already have problems getting through the line beforehand. So that's going to be really, really cool to see another guy that's going to be up on that line actually making a difference. So that's going to be pretty awesome to see. Next person is one of. Uh, one guy that's coming from my hometown, Elijah Lacey, Savannah, Georgia. That's where I was born and raised. Uh, six foot five, two twenty. He's gonna be on the defensive line, and that defensive line is going to get some help because we're losing Justin Ellis, we're losing uh Dylan Springer, and uh we need some guys on that line. So once again, it goes back to what I'm saying: we get a lot of depth and we get a lot of quality. Thirty-seven total tackles, three for a loss as a senior. Had a thirty-seven yard touchdown catch as a tight end. Keep that in mind. I doubt if this could be the cat be the case, but keep that in mind. Was a member of WJCL's Big 22 team. It's good to have a guy that's going to stay in at, at home, basically. Stakesboro, all he has to do, he was at New Hampstead High School, which is, uh, I think it's in, uh, uh, I, I want to say it's in Bloomingdale. It's not too far outside of Savannah. Nevertheless, just take Highway 80 and then take you straight into uh, the Stakesboro, and you're right there. And so he's right at home, 40 minutes 
45 minutes up the road, it's good to see homegrown talent staying in, and it looks like he's going to be able to make a difference right away, hopefully. Because I don't know, like I said, I don't know how coach and, and, and the staff is going to do with some of these younger players. A lot of these players got playing time later, like a Latrell Bullard. You got a couple other guys who played later. I don't know if they're going to make an impact right away. But either way, you're dealing with the defense like Will Harris, and you have the defense that – um. You get you're bringing in your defensive guys that are going to be able to, uh, you know, learn the system out the gate instead of transitioning from another uh, defense that most of the guys that were used to last year. It's going to be this is where you're going to see what this coaching staff is about. Yes, you can bring in nice players. Now, can you get these players to buy in what you're doing offensively with Brian Ellis and company? No brainer. I I, I already seen it. Defensively, that's where Wills have a little bit of issues at. We did step up at the at some crucial moments, but for the most part, we need a defense that's really going to be solid throughout the season. And this is where it starts. One of the first guys that we did pick up defensively on Georgia Southern. Next person that we're going to be talking about is another offensive lineman, Bryson Norris, coming from Coffeeville, um, Coffeeville Community College. And I think it says CC, so I'm taking it as community college. Played, uh, I think this was in the, the Kansas area or whatever case it may be. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not good with locations or names. But he was from Crestview, Florida. And I heard from Coach that he's also, I think he's from Georgia. In 2019, he did uh, go to South Alabama, but he didn't see any playing at that time. He was red-shirted. So he was in the Sun Belt, got a little bit of taste of the Sun Belt by watching what's going on, went to Coffeeville, and he's back in the Sun Belt as a Georgia Southern Eagle. Um, Three-time All-Area selection at Crestview High, earning first-team All-State recognition recognition in his final year. Prior to the start, prior to the start of his senior season, he was named the Northwest Florida Daily News Dandy Dozen team. I don't know, that just sounds so cool, Dandy Dozen. Help the Bulldogs post a ten and three overall mark and advance to the semifinals of the State Six A playoffs. I, look, I think this guy is going to be pretty nice. Help the team to gain over 2,700 yards in rushing in 2018. Look, I don't know how much we're going to run the ball, but I know we do run the ball efficiently. But if he's anywhere near to a guy that can actually help with the run game, it's always a plus because we do have some hogs back there that could run the ball. So that's going to be really cool. And to have a guy that could do a little mix of both because he's going to learn how to pass protect. And I'm pretty sure he knows how to pass protect. But that's one thing he's going to learn, how to pass protect in his offense. Nevertheless, let's jump back to the running game. If he was able to give, to help the team gain over 2,700 yards, we have a running back that's coming in from Hartsville, South Carolina. Jay Sean Anderson, six foot 190. I listened to Coach Clay Helton. Clay Helton said that this kid can run between the tackles, run on the outside, and catch out the backfield. That sounds very similar to O.J. Arnold. So now you're starting to see the type of running backs that we're probably going to end up getting throughout, you know, Coach Clay Helton's tenure here at Georgia Southern. You're going to get more of a balanced type of running back. Like, you know, with Gerald Green, you know what kind of running back he was getting. This kid can run between the tackles. He's pretty fast. He was like that balance that you're looking for. And you also know that Jalen White is a thumper. The dude will run you over. But one thing about Jalen White that was really, really significant, he can catch out the backfield as well. But then you brought O.J. Arnold in who could do a little bit of everything. Catch, you can punt return, kick return, catch out the back. He can line up a wide receiver. He can run between the tackles. He's looking really good. And you're bringing a J. Sean Anderson that can pretty much mimic what he can do. Six foot 190. Now, don't get it twisted. This kid got some, got some um, weight to him. At six foot one ninety, I mean, you got some size to you, so he could put on maybe another ten to fifteen pounds. We may have a really nice looking running back as far as Jay Sean Anderson. Now, looking at his numbers, he rushed for over fourteen hundred yards, twenty three touchdowns. He also had twenty three receptions for two hundred eighty two yards and two scores. Class four A region six, uh, four A region six offensive player of the year as a senior. Also a member of the twenty twenty two ABC fifteen All Zone team. Name to the 2022 Touchstone Energy North and South All-Star Bowl game, all region selection three times, ranked 102 in running back in the country and named the 31 player in the state of South Carolina, according to ESPN Recruiting. I am very, very shocked that we got this kid. And I'm serious because first and foremost, Yes, I understand South Carolina is right across the border from, um, George, uh, from George Southern. You know, it's not that far, but 
I, I don't know how many kids were trying to, how many schools were trying to go after this kid, but for us to get him, that is amazing. That, that is really good because I know that he's going to do well in this offense. He's going to do well with what we're doing. And, and it, it's, just, it's, it's just awesome. It just goes back to show you what this offense, not this offense, but what the staff is doing as far as bringing players in. This is, this is just a flat out awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Jumping to the next person that we picked up was Aiden Jackson. Aiden Jackson, defensive back, 5'11", 185 from Marietta, Georgia. Walton High School. Now, look, I've heard a lot of stuff about this kid. It doesn't say much, it don't say much here on the screen about him, but I heard that this kid is really good. And, and when you're looking at defensive backs and what we lost with Derek Canteen and uh, we got a couple other guys um, that are still around, we still needed some depth. We, you can't have enough defensive backs, especially in a league like the Sun Belt. You cannot have enough. So with bringing a guy like him in and for him to be first all-region selection in the five for the five seven a class of uh, classification as a wide receiver, you also got a guy who can probably return kicks as well. So this is another really good special player or a guy that you can use him in different ways that has a lot in his toolbox that can actually be productive in various ways. You know, so this is going to be interesting. Kind of, he, he, he's starting to, he kind of, thinking about it, for what he can do, he can catch, he can play defensive back, he can uh, return punts and kicks. It's kind of reminding me of the defensive back version of O.J. Arnold. So it, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how, what, how he plays out and how that goes. Back to the offensive line, we're going to be talking about from Applin, Georgia, Harlem High School, Matthew Williams, six foot five, three hundred pounds. Another guy that's on the offensive line. Uh, he was the Region Four Three A Player of the Year as offensive and defensive lineman. Selected to play at the Border Bowl X for Team Georgia. Um, that's really interesting that he could play both sides of the ball. Um, you don't find too many linemen that can do that. Usually, a, the a offensive lineman may go out to play a little bit of tight end, or they end up being like a long snapper, which is almost the same thing. And most of the time when you see defensive linemen, you pretty much see them do the same thing, end up being a tight end, or they end up going at linebacker or something like that. You don't really hear too many guys who can play both sides of the ball in the trenches like that. That is very, very uh, interesting. So we're going to keep an eye on him down the road as well. Next one was another offensive lineman from Fleming Island, Florida. Fleming Island High School, Ethan Williams, six foot three, two hundred ninety pounds. Um, named to the Clay County coaches, all county football team, uh, first team as a senior. Don't have much information on him, but like I said, you cannot have enough depth when it comes to the actual offensive line. You can't have enough depth when it comes to you know people in general. You know, so this is uh something that you would want to have in your uh arsenal. Just just have the depth. And quality players too. So if you're starting to get named to, you know, uh, all football teams or all county, all state, all you know, you know all city teams, you, you're doing something right on, at the position. We're going back to the defensive line. We got Jacob Ferguson here, defensive lineman, six foot four, two forty five, from Troy, Missouri. Uh, Troy Buchanan, Iowa Western Community College. Had 2.5 sacks in five games at Iowa Western. That, that, that's actually pretty good. You got two, two and a half sacks in five games. It's not bad at all. Um, enrolled in Georgia Southern January. Uh, attended Northern Iowa, Northern Iowa, where he redshirted in high school. Two-time all-conference honoree who also earned all-district honors in 2018-2019. Racked up 46 tackles, six sacks, nine uh, tackles for loss uh, along with two forced fumbles two fumble recoveries is a touchdown three sport athlete with letters in football wrestling track and field so i think this guy is going to be pretty good I, I, you know i don't talk much about the discord go down there and uh go to the discord and uh join we talk all georgia southern a little bit atlanta falcons and you know just you know all a little bit of everything over there but i wanted to give a shout out and i should have done this earlier which I will, I will start doing this more often, I was going to give a shout-out to the guys in the Discord. These guys have been phenomenal with giving out information, talking about information, putting stuff out there so people can understand what's going on. If you really want to know what's been going on with the recruiting, to be honest with you, that's one of the best places to be. First and frame rates Discord, that link will be down in the description. Nevertheless, let's keep it moving. Um, 
Jacob Ferguson, I heard a lot about him. I think this guy is going to be really nice once again on that defensive line. We need some help on the defensive line after we lost Springer and Ellis. So it's going to be really interesting where he fits in as well because he has experience. He has experience. He's not like necessarily a, a high school player coming right in. He's played um, a year or he's played a few games at, in college already. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with him. Now, with all the quarterbacks we got, we did lose one, Kyle Van Trees. Shout out to him for a phenomenal season in turning Georgia Southern to a passing offense because we was run first forever. So we lost him, but we picked up another one. Kobe Walton, knows Tennessee, Knowlesville High School, 6'1", 185. The region 6'5", Offensive Player of the Year. Completed 202 of 328. For 3,047 um, 3, yards, 31 touchdowns as a senior, threw for more than 3,000 yards and 32 th touchdowns and just six interceptions as a senior, rated the number 85 quarterback in the country and the 33 player in the uh, state of Tennessee, ranked number 86 in the country and 59 player in the state of Tennessee by 24-7 sports. The other one was by on three, so I, I kind of had that mixed up. Sorry about that. Nevertheless, I don't know what we're going to do with quarterback. I know there's been rumbling saying that we're going to bring a quarterback in as a transfer. We may do that because between now and February is all free game. And some of these quarterbacks don't have a home yet. You know, so I would not be I would not be surprised if we end up getting a quarterback then. But I do understand what we have. I like what we have already. And But if we do bring one in, I get it. I don't know what's going to happen with Kobe Walton, but I think he is going to be – a guy that's going to continue to battle with the rest of the guys for the top spot to be QB1. To be honest with you, it, it's, it's almost pretty much wide open right now. I'm betting on um, Col Colton Fitzgerald, but it's, it could be wide open, so you never know. Going back to defense, Braden Palmer. Uh, I heard a lot about this kid. 6'4", 215, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hogue, I think this is Hogue High School. Name all conferences junior in cha at Chambers High. Recorded 40 tackles, 9 for loss, and 4 sacks as a junior. Ranked 40th player in the state by North Carolina by rivals. So this is a really good pickup to go that far out of the uh, out of our radius, which is mostly Georgia and Florida, to get somebody up there in North Carolina. Um, I, I shouldn't be talking about a radius. We just got a punter from Australia. So, I mean, what am I talking about? But that's going to be another pickup on the offensive line that we, I mean, I'm sorry, defensive line that we need. So we got depth. We got a lot of depth over there. We have a lot of depth at wide receiver as well, but we have another wide receiver coming in from the Atlanta, Georgia area. I've heard a lot about this kid, DeAndre Buchanan. I heard this guy could be a star. And being in this offense, everybody that played wide receiver is going to eat. They're going to get their shine. I, I, I promise you that you will. You can just ask the guys that we had this year. Everybody's going to shine. And DeAndre Buchanan, 5'11", 175, out of Carver Atlanta High School. Heard this guy got some speed on him. He can catch. Preseason All-State collection. Uh, selection. I said collection. Selection. Caught 70 passes for 866 yards. Seven touchdowns as a senior. As a junior, recorded 1,000 yards all-purpose and nine touchdowns as a receiver and a returner. So now you're talking about a kid that could probably return punts and kickoff returns as well so you got another versatile player that's going to be doing something really nice really interesting to see if he gets play playing time already because you got a lot of guys you got a lot of guys that are actually out here doing their thing for georgia southern at the wide receiver position i wouldn't be surprised if he end up getting rotated in and out of the uh ro uh the wide receiver rotation troy pikes defensive lineman out of atlanta georgia mays high school Another guy named first, oh, I'm sorry, let me go back. Six foot four, 300 pounds out of Atlanta, Georgia. Named first team all region. 5'5", five, five, a grouping. Rated 207th of defensive lineman in the country. And 186 player uh, state by on three. And 191 player in the state of Georgia by 24-7 sports. So what we have here is another guy that's going to be on the defensive line. Big, big guy, 6'4", 300 I mean, you're talking about a guy that's probably going to be an anchor interior lineman. And, you know, we can still use that ever since, uh, you know, we've been having, uh, uh, what's his name, Wright, Lo not Logan Wright, but the other Wright that played 
um, up in the middle, and you had guys like Christian Varner coming in, and now you got Troy Pikes right behind him. You're going to have some more guys that's going to be really physical with that size in that area. So another big pickup for Coach Will Harris, and it's just going to continue to look good. Next person, Robert Wright, offensive lineman, six foot four, 285, out of Stockbridge, Georgia, Stockbridge High School, another person out of that Atlanta area. First team all-region selection as a senior for the five, group 5 4 eight classification. Just more depth. We're going to get some more guys that's going to be a part of the offensive line. And like I said, that offensive line from last year, if they're going to continue to build off that, nobody's getting through that line. So whoever the quarterback is, you're going to be well protected. You're going to be well protected. So don't worry. No worries at all. Um, and if the quarterback is going to be with, protected, he should be able to throw to our receivers. And we just got another tight end. Elijah Walton, 6'6", 220 out of Ocala, 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 Florida, North Marion High School. As a senior, had 22 catches for 537. That is a pretty big ratio right there. 22 catches for 537. So that means he's been stretching the field a little bit. Eight touchdowns. Named to the FACA All-District 17th um, team as a member. Rated as the 104 tight end in the country. 260 player uh, in the state by on three ranked at 102 tight end in the country and 202 as a player at the state of Florida. So you, we got a pretty good athlete right there. Pretty good guy that's going to be playing tight end. And with him and uh, Jaden McHale, you, you know, we're starting to, like I said, get some more tight ends out there and we're going to see how that goes. Last but definitely not least in this signing class that the last guy that signed today was Cabaseca. Defensive lineman, 6'4", 240 out of Lithia Springs. I've heard a lot about this guy. I heard that he's going to be really nice for this team. Another guy on the defensive line along with Troy um, Pikes and others that have been um, or that's been uh, recruited and committed. Named first team all-region, 5'5", a grouping. Named first team all-region selection for the 5'5", a grouping rank. Uh, the 109 defensive lineman in the country, 164 player in the state. Rated as 192 defensive lineman in the country and uh 105 on 185 by on three. So that's what we got right now. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get more people, but if you listen to all, all that I've done for the past 20, you know, five, 27 minutes, we got some very special guys. Now I'm gonna mention the four guys that we got from the transfer portal. Uh, from what I've heard. Coach Clay Helton is basically saying that those guys are going to be, um, they already announced on Twitter, all four of them, but I guess it's going to be official once, you know, the beginning of the year, once school starts back. So the guys that you have, Cameron Williams from University of Washington to Georgia Southern. I think I talked about that on my last episode. You got a safety that is familiar with Coach Will Harris is going to be here. Jalen Barton, wide receiver from Pitt to Georgia Southern. This is a guy who caught passes from Kenny Pickett, the guy who's in the, the Steelers' starting quarterback right now. He's going to be here to go along with his air raid offense. And if you looked at his Twitter, he was like, look, this is the second, the team with the most second passing yards in the country. Why not fit? Why not come to Georgia Southern way of fit? Now, that's paraphrasing. That's not what he said. But you go to his Twitter and check it out. But that's basically how he felt about coming here. Now, also, a big, big tight end. Third tight end, third tight end that we picked up, Keaton Upshaw from Kentucky, six foot seven. I think he's like two hundred and thirty pounds somewhere around there. Big, big tight end that's going to be coming in from Kentucky to Georgia Southern. Look, with what we already have with Elijah Walton uh, and Jaden McCow, these tight ends are going to be something serious. Along with all the other passing weapon, I mean the receiving weapons that we have, we're going to be a problem when it comes to guys defending this team. So that is, you know, excellent pickup coming from the SEC down to Georgia Southern. And last but not least, Devon Ferguson from Bowling Green to Georgia Southern. Now, he's going to be playing probably nickel or safety. I think he's going to be playing safety. If you've seen this kid highlight reel, this guy looked really, really good at what he's done. Um, I, I have it on my Twitter. If you can follow me on VF Baller, you can go look. Devon Ferguson is a guy that we definitely need in the secondary. So between him and uh, the couple other guys we already have, and then you got Aiden Jackson coming in at defensive back, 
uh, I hate it. I hate to see, uh, you know, Derek Canteen leave us for the transfer portal. But at the same time, that's just the way of the business. And for us to get guys that are coming in, that's going to be not only just replacing, but actually, you know, making their own name out the gate and the blue and white is going to be great. So those are the four guys that I talked to talked about that are um, transfers, but I'm going to uh, actually do a whole episode on them. And uh, that's just pretty much going to be it because I think speaking of the transfer is going to talk a lot about, you know, what the bigger, uh, not going to say the bigger picture, but another lens to what this staff is doing because you see what they're doing on the recruiting side with high schoolers and, and some guys that come from Juco transfers. And um, you see what they're able to do there, keeping guys in-house from Georgia, Florida, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, in this little area and picking up uh, – uh, picking up amazing talent in this area but then when you see guys that are coming from other schools bigger schools uh, or schools that um that you would never guess that we had any ties to that are that are coming down to want to play for this program and what we're doing it says a lot about what we're building here at georgia southern so i'm going to do a whole other video on those guys and anything else that comes from those, uh, any extra guys we're going to talk about. Because I've also heard that we have a linebacker that's coming in that is not listed here, but I heard Coach Clay Helton talk about um, in his press conference. But we will try to get more information about that as well. So be on the lookout for that episode and uh, continue to follow us for what we're doing over here. Not only just on this show, but on the Discord because Georgia Southern is rising. From three wins to six wins to six wins to maybe nine, 10, 11, 12. I don't know, but this is how you make it happen. You bring in a culture, you bring in the guys to buy into the culture, and you make sure these guys are in the best position to execute. Hopefully, we'll get that done and we'll see how it plays out. If you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Look, this is an extra episode, signing day recap. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys hype? I'm hype. I love what I see here. This I just cannot wait to see what happens when spring comes and we see all this other stuff going on. When the practice come in, I'm going to try to do my best to be a part of all of this and get first hand and first visuals on all of this stuff. So hopefully you guys will continue to watch and listen. I am on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. Also, I'm on YouTube and Rumble. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. This has been a pretty long episode, but... It was all worth it. You guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.